let us do an example of a Carnot map minimization. So we're going to have the following example with a function of three variables and this will be an incompletely specified boolean function because we're going to have a don't care set. So don't care set typically means that we don't care if the function gives us zero or one because this input combination cannot happen anyway. Our on set is given by the input combinations that we represent as 0, 2, 3 and 7. And our don't care set is given by the input combinations that we represent as 5 and 6. So in our truth table, this will correspond to with the input 0, 0, 0, we will have the output that we call f of 0. Then here we have the output called f of 1, f of 2 f of 3, f of 4, f of 5, here we have f of 6, and finally we have f of 7. So this means that in our truth table we would write for f of 0 we would have a 1, for f of 1 we would have a 0 because it is not given by the onset and the don't care set, so then it must be in the offset. So f of 2 is 1, f of 3 is 1, f of 4 is also 0, f of 5 is don't care, f of 6 is don't care, and f of 7 is a 1. So this will be our truth table of the Boolean function. Now we take this truth table and we will write the outputs in our Carnot map. So for f of 0 we had a 1, for f of 1 we had 0, for f of 2 we had 1, for f of 3 we had 1, for f of 4 we had a 0 and that is written in the last column or last row of our Carnot map and f of 5 is don't care, f of 6 is don't care and f of 7 which is found here is a 1. And now what we want to do is to find as large rectangular blocks as possible in our Carnot maps, which includes either 1, 2, 4, or in this case 8 once. So we can do our first rectangular block by finding this block here. So this is the largest one that we can find for f of 0. Then if we go to our next one, which is f of 2, the largest rectangular block we can find here will include these four different entries. And if we go to the next one, which will be this one, we will already have our largest rectangular block. For this one, we have our largest rectangular block. And also for this one, we already have our largest rectangular block. And for this last term that we have here, the largest rectangular block that we can find will also include the one above the don't care term. And for simplicity, we're going to name our large rectangular blocks as this one we call A, this block we're going to call B, and this block here we're going to call C. So the prime implicants is now what we have identified, and we have denoted them A, B, and C. So if we start with A, this can be written as the cube function C, 0, B, 0 of X, which can be written as the lattice exponents X1, 0, X2, B, X3, 0, which we can also write out as x1 prime x3 prime and why do we have exactly this cube here 0 b 0 well if we look at our rectangular block that we named a this will cover these two rows and what we have for these two rows is that x1 is always 0 but x2 can be both 0 and 1 so this will give us the zero, the first zero that we have in our cube and the b for x2 that we have in our cube. And for x3, it will only take the value zero. So this will give us zero b zero. 
And if we now continue to b, this can be written as the cube function with the cube b 1 b of x because if we look at the rectangular block here we can see that for these two rows that we have here the x2 variable must be 1 but the x1 variable can be both 0 and 1 which gives us the b the first b here for the x1 variable the 1 here because x2 must be 1 and then the b variable because both 0 and 1 can be taken for the x3 variable. So this we can write as x1 b, x2 1 and x3 b, which we can write as only x2. And finally our prime implicant that we called c can be written as the cube function with our cube that is first 1 because x1 needs to take the value 1 then we have a b for the x2 variable because the x2 variable can take both the value 1 and 0 and then we have a 1 for the x3 variable because here it is clear that this is in the 1 column for x3 so this we will write also as x1 1 x2 b x3 1 which can also be written as only x1 x3 so we have now all our prime implicants here written as x1 prime x3 prime and x2 and x1 x3 so what we want to do now is to find the essential primes. So which of these are essential? Well, A is essential because the one that we have here is only covered by the rectangular block that we called A. So this must be used, this implicant, so it is essential. The B prime implicant is also essential because if we look at the one that we have in this position, this is only covered by our rectangular block that we called B. So this must be used to realize our function. And C is not essential because the one that we have here is also covered by another prime implicant. And this don't care term here doesn't have to be uh, covered by essential prime implicants. It is only those that uniquely covers a one that are essential. So our minimized function here can be written as the prime implicant A, which is also essential, or the prime implicant B, which is also essential. So this minimized function can be written as x1 prime x3 prime or x2 so now we have minimized our function on disjunctive form we can also look at the same example where we want to minimize the boolean function on conjunctive form instead and in this case we just fill out our truth table as 1 0, 1, 1, 0, don't care, don't care, and 1. Now we fill out the Carnot map as the same, in the same way as before. So we have 1, 0, 1, 1, uh, 0, don't care, don't care, and 1. And now remember that for our conjunctive form, we want to find the zeros in our function instead of the 1s. So what we want to do here is that we want to find as large rectangular blocks as possible for the zeros and the don't care terms in our function. So starting with the first zero that we can find, our largest rectangular block consists of this block. Because remember that we have a cyclic gray code in our Carnot map, so we can also make these cyclic rectangular blocks. For the 
don't care term that we have here, the largest rectangular block we can make is this rectangular block here. And for the zero that we have here, the largest rectangular block we can make is these two terms here. And as before, let's just give them some names for simplicity. So we call this one A. We're going to call this one here B. And then we're going to call this one C. And now we want to write our prime implicants. And by definition, these are not really implicants because they cover the ones and the don't care terms of our functions. So for lack of a better word, we will just call these anti-prime implicants. And we write them as A, B, and C, which is what we have named them as in our Carnot map. So starting with A, our cube function here will be A, C, and the cubes. Let us look at the rectangular block A. So here and here, what we can see is that x1 can take both values 0 and 1. So this will be a B. And for x2, it only takes the value 0. And for x3, it takes the value 1. So this is our cube. And since it is zeros in our rectangular blocks, we take the complement of this cube function. So this can be written as x cube prime x3, and then we take the complement. So this is written as using the Morgan's law x2 or x3 prime. And for our rectangular block that we denoted c, we would have the cube function, which is 1, 0, b of x, and then we prime this, and this can be written as x1, x2 prime, prime, which using the Morgan's law can be written as x1 prime or x2. And finally, for our rectangular block c, we have the cube function that we write as 1, b0, so this is our cube, and then we prime this, so this will be equal to x1 x3 prime, and then we prime it and we use the Morgan's law again to get x1 prime or x3. So which ones of a, b, and c are essential? Well, we can see that a is the only block that covers the first zero here, so this is clearly essential. And both B and C will cover this zero over here, so none of these are essential. So these are not essential. Write it like this. Not essential. But we clearly need one of them in order to cover the zero that we have down here. So the minimal function can be written as f, let's denote it min, this will equal to either a and b, which we can write as x2 or x3 prime and x1 prime or x2. Or we can also write our minimal function as a and c, which would equal x2 or x3 prime and x1 prime or x3. So both these two functions are minimal functions. They both include our essential anti-prime implicant and they also include as few additional implicants as possible in order to cover all the zeros in our function. And zeros we used here only because we wanted the conjunctive form. They still, of course, realize this truth table.